Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, episode number 32. Today's discussion will look at the question, how do you encourage learners who resist participating in class? In the Classroom with Benjamin Stewart, making teaching and learning more transparent, is a podcast for educators, instructional designers, administrators, trainers, or anyone who is interested in topics related to curriculum, assessment, instruction, and educational technologies. The goal is to provoke new ideas, perspectives, and context around teaching, learning, and educational leadership. Today I want to look at uh, the issue or the problem of learners who resist giving presentations in front of others. And I know that giving presentations is one of the most uh, feared uh, aspects of not only in the workplace, but in certainly in, in the school, in the classroom. There are many classes that require such presentations. And so I want to talk about students who actually resist uh, these, types of, um, these types of activities. And there was an article called Teens Are Protesting In-Class Presentations. You can find the link in the show notes below. But I want to talk about a couple of uh, quotes that this article addresses because I think it's interesting and it sets up nicely, I think, a second article we'll talk about called Students Are Resisting In-Class Presentations. So in the article, Teens Are Protesting In-Class Presentations, uh, there was an interesting fact, according to the recent survey by the Association of American Colleges and Universities, oral communication is one of the most sought-after skills in the workplace, with over 90% of hiring managers saying it's important. So I think that you know, a lot of the, the reasons we ask students to participate in presentations is not only giving them an opportunity to demonstrate what they know and what they can do, but really help learners become communicators since this is going to be a job skill that I think is important, that's going to be important uh, well into the future. There are a lot of jobs in the future we're not going to be able to predict, but I think we can predict with a high level of certainty that being able to articulate one's ideas, being able to persuade and convince others, and um, really being able to just be an overall articulate individual that this is going to be an important skill set. There was a tweet posted by a 15-year-old high school student who states, Stop forcing students to present in front of the class and give them a chance not to. This particular tweet garnered more than 130,000 retweets and nearly half a million likes. A similar sentiment tweeted in January also racked up thousands of likes and retweets. So it states here that teachers are listening. They're actually being forced to listen to this uh, concern. Another uh, 14-year-old student, an uh, an 8th grader, states, Nobody should be forced to do something that makes them uncomfortable. And she goes on to say, Even though speaking in front of class is supposed to build your confidence and it's part of your schoolwork, I think if a student is really unsettled and anxious because of it, you should probably make it something less stressful. School isn't something a student should fear. And I think that... The In fact, I have it underlined here, making it something less stressful. There are really two issues here that's going on. And as I'm reading this article, I am constantly thinking about how a teacher might even present or um, how, how a teacher actually prepares students to carry out presentations. Because in the same quote, as she says, make it less stressful, is the issue here making it less stressful is or is the issue do away with it? Uh, entirely and allow completely different alternatives to be acceptable instead of giving presentations. I think these are two issues here. And, you know, putting aside any type of learning disability or learning challenge, um, I think that having students look at how they present presentations and what kind of support they're getting, I think is something that's often ignored uh, and certainly ignored in this particular article. There was not a lot of discussion of how teachers are actually preparing and the support that they, that they give. There is another quote in the same article that states, It feels that presentations are often more graded on delivery when some people can't help not being able to deliver it well, even if the content is the best presentation ever. This was from a 15-year-old uh, student from Massachusetts who strongly agrees with the idea that teachers should offer alternative options for students. But here I have underlined, even if the content is less, the best presentation ever, 
that leads me to question, okay, what is the best presentation ever? Can it be a, the best presentation ever if it's not delivered well? So I think that's kind of a rude question here that's kind of implicit in this uh, in this student's uh, quote and one that I would question about again how are students or how teachers sorry how are teachers preparing students to deliver these presentations are the expectations being explicit so do students know how they should deliver uh, a presentation for one and then are students guided and given uh, strategies and tips on how they can prepare to deliver a better presentation so you know, there's one thing is to include the, the content required to give a good presentation, and, and of course the other is to deliver it. So that leads me to the question again, how are teachers preparing for these uh, preparing students for these presentations? You're listening to In the Classroom with Benjamin Stewart, where each episode poses a through-line question or problem intended to generate dialogue around current issues that affect educational stakeholders who are concerned with improving learning outcomes. If you have anything to say about today's topic, send your comments and questions to www.benjaminlstewart.org. Now, the second article, Students Are Resisting in Class Presentations, states uh, that according to the American Psychological Association, when people are fearful of something, they tend to avoid the feared objects, activities, or situations. Although this avoidance might help reduce feelings of fear in the short term, over the long term, it can make the fear become even worse. So here the idea is just by ignoring the problem and kind of uh, giving in, so to speak, to the student's request of avoiding certain types of activities, in this case re- presentations, that we're actually, uh, we're actually hindering their de- development, we're actually making their fear even worse. And I think this is a valid point and one that, again, goes back to my original idea of well, how, are, how are we helping students and preparing them and how are we grading them in such a way that we're not just leaving them and saying, okay, deal with it, do your presentation, suck it up, I think is one term, one phrase that was quoted in the second article. And certainly if teachers are telling students to suck it up, uh, that's that's probably not the best approach and, and probably is the reason why many students are fearing presentations in the first place. So... The, uh, there's another quote here I'd like to share. In, in her piece, Lorenz quotes a 14-year-old student who says, nobody should be forced to do something that makes them uncomfortable. But then the author says, but the best available science tells us if we want to be successful in life, maybe we should, or maybe they should. Maybe teachers should be forcing them to be uncomfortable because this idea of being comfortable and uncomfortable or being easy and hard I hear this a lot we need to make classes easy for the students we need to make them comfortable and certainly we aren't setting out to make things difficult and we aren't setting out necessarily to make them feel uncomfortable but I think these feelings of of being uncomfortable and and students going through difficult times in their learning is part of the learning process. So I think the question is, how do they overcome the and, uh, this being uncomfortable? How do they over, overcome something that at first was difficult and then later becomes easier? This, I think, is the at the root question here that I want to share with you today and think about how do we prepare students to... Uh, to meet the challenges that they're going to face in the classroom. How do we encourage them and what kind of support do we provide students so that they can work through the, the, um, the challenges of a particular assignment? Today we're talking about giving presentations, but we, this could easily mean you know, any type of presentation or any type of activity that students feel that they, are, that they don't like, that they feel uncomfortable are we now going to say that they now have the right to say, no, we don't want to do this, we want to do something else? I think that having a differentiated classroom is important, but I think there are certain types of activities 
and expectations that we should have given the proper support that students should meet and they should be able to achieve. And again, the end result here, the, the reasoning for this is so that they're better prepared as citizens going into the workplace, that they're able to resolve conflict, they can, that they can form valid arguments, that they can work with others and, um, and be able to articulate and communicate in such a way that uh, helps helps not only themselves, but it helps the, the group as well. So the question I'd like to pose to you in this broadcast is how do you encourage learners to resist participating in class? It could be for presentations. It could be for any other type of activity that you think that students maybe often uh, find challenging. I know in my case, students often feel that writing poetry is a challenge. I deal with uh, uh, English language learners. So they're, of course, learning, not only learning another language, but also trying to learn figurative speech and being able to uh, be familiar with diff different types of uh, poetry uh, formats and schemes and rhymes. And so this is something that I think all of us face in, in a cert to a certain degree and would very much like to hear your, your feedback on this question. Thanks for listening to In the Classroom with Benjamin Stewart. If you want to be part of the broadcast or just would like to leave feedback about the show, leave me a message at www.benjaminlstewart.org. In the Classroom, encouraging educators to think and do out loud.